Hey, this is Drew Baird from Moon Audio and welcome to Axpona 2023. I'm here in the Orander room with my good dear friend Ari and we're gonna talk about all things Orander. Now you guys may or may not know this already, but it's one of my favorite brands. I'm not gonna do any of the talking today. I'm gonna leave it to the experts. <laughs> we're gonna find out the whys, the why nots, the theories and different reasons why they make the products that they do. So Ari, what do you think, what do you think is the main philosophy behind the Orander products? I would say if I had to distill that down into one concise statement, it would really be taking the computer-ish and IT type of experience out of digital and quote-unquote computer-based audio. When a render started back in 2010, there just wasn't a solution out there that was a purpose-built audio component that had that old-school audiophile component. There were weird computers that you had to hack and drivers that you had to install and and third and no party support apps and, and no support yeah. mm -hmm. it was the wild west so arender decided to design and build a product that would fill that gap for audio files dyed in the wool audio files who wanted to dip their toes in the file based playback yep. world that includes streaming that includes cd rips downloads when they started their streaming wasn't really a thing yet. We've adapted that and the experience of listening to streaming music is right up there with file-based playback now on the render platform. Mm -hmm. No matter whether you're streaming from Tidal or Cobuzz or playing locally stored files, the experience is the same and that experience that a render tries to deliver is that of a curated music library, a, co a collector's approach to building a digital music library. Yeah. And for you guys that aren't real tech savvy, one of the things that I really love about Orander is its simplicity. It's just easy to operate. It's really got an Apple-esque theme to it, if you mm -hmm. will. The way they've done the conductor control app, it's just simple. It's simple to set up. You don't have to deal with so many network issues. Some of their pieces even have their own switches in it. It's a daisy chain, other components and whatnot. There's just, they're just really well thought out and simple. That's the key word, simple, but they sound yeah. fantastic too. So the first stuff we're gonna look at are the, the components that are both digital and analog based, that they have a digital to analog converter in it. Mm -hmm. So why don't you walk us down the line um, of these four models that we have here and sure. tell us a little bit about each and which one, you know, what makes it unique about each one. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's start with the, the device that we've actually got downstairs at our ear gear table. It's the A200, the A standing for analog output stage. These are, we're gonna go through the series of pieces that have a D to A converter in us. Tell us a little bit about these. So these are for the music lover who cares a lot about sound. You've got a pretty nice system, but you're maybe not interested or have the inclination to build a system with a bunch of different boxes and cables and spaghetti and a separate digital source that you have to pair up with a DAC. As we all know, in the world of high-end audio, you can often achieve better, higher levels of performance when you do enter that world of separates, but there's a lot to be said, and I think there's a lot of people for whom this integrated approach makes a whole lot of sense. So starting with the A200 here, which is the entry level into this A series, we have the complete Arender experience with the Arender app, the option to install your own storage for your own music library if you have CD rips or downloads or what have you, and a really, really fine DAC built into it. This is based around the AKM 4490 chipset. Um, and you know, the chip matters, it makes a big difference, but almost certainly as important, if not more important, as the power supplies that govern that and the output stage and the input stage that makes it all run. So a render has done an incredibly good job of making a piece that's just downright musical and yep. satisfying. It's a rich, muscular sound that I would qualify the stack with. Um, without sacrificing detail in any way, it's utterly smooth and non-fatiguing and just a great, fun, simple way to get awesome sounding music. Now stepping up to the A15, what do you notice here? This look familiar, this DAC yep. board? Yep. It's the same DAC board except it's in a dual mono configuration as opposed to the A200 single stereo. So we've got a separate DAC board for the left and right channels. We've got separate power supplies to govern those. And throughout the Arender product line, you notice we have a lot of power transformers. And as you move up the line, there are more and more. That's because in designing a source component like this, the more you can separate the power streams, 
so to avoid crosstalk and avoid having any one toroidal transformer um, powering too many different facets of the machine, we end up with a lower noise floor and more headroom. So we've got one transformer that is entirely dedicated to running the CPU board and then a whole nother section of the machine here that is just the sensitive audio outputs. So we're talking about physical and electrical isolation of signal from noise. Yep. And not only that, you know, obviously the A200 is single-ended outputs, the A15 true balanced all the way through outputs. So, you know, if you've got a balanced system, you definitely want to go with the balanced outputs here. Now we're going to get to some real fun pieces, yeah. the A20 and A30, yeah. that I'm, I'm a big fan of. Why? Because they also have headphone amps in them. And you, were, you know us, we're all about headphones. So what makes the A30 and the A20 different from each other in terms of um, functionality, circuit design, et cetera? They're very similar to one another. They're different from the A15. They have an altogether better DAC board than what we have in the A15 and the A200. Again, in a dual mono implementation. And you also notice they have this clock here, this oven controlled crystal oscillator. The clock is what's in charge of the flow of information in any digital data stream. And if you have a clock that's not completely precise and stable, then you end up with jitter. Yeah. Uh, you know, blurred out sound stage and loss of focus and you lose that sense of the music existing in space. You know, this is something that you don't get from gathering around a, a, a Sonos system. It just doesn't happen that right. way. When you have a proper hi-fi system, a stereo system, the music exists in space and it's a very special event <laughs> that is not an everyday thing for people. So with this A20, we've got a bona fide high-end DAC built right into it. You look at the hardware engineering that goes on here and it's, it's we're, we're proud of it, I'll say that. And then the, the really only differences between the A20 and the A30 are you notice the A30 adds this CD ripping drive and a 10 terabyte storage drive built right into it. So this is for the uh, Avid CD collector. You pop a CD in here and it rips it in a lossless format complete with error detection and correction and it's stored on the hard drive here and you've got a permanent enduring music library that is yours. That mm -hmm. is not what some algorithm has shoved in your feed of maybe you want to listen to this playlist. No, this is for the album oriented hardcore collector type of audiophile. Mm -hmm. It also has a balanced headphone output which with a lot of the stuff that you guys play with mm -hmm. over there at Moon, the balance yep. is really where it's at. Yep, yep. More control, more dynamics, quieter backgrounds. Yes, balance is definitely the way to go. Okay, so that's that's the analog um, versions, the, the ones that have the built-in DDA converters. Next up, we're gonna talk about the ones that don't have DDAs, just you know, reference pieces, digital gear, and rippers and stuff like that. So hold on a second while we change angles, and we'll get back to you. <laughs> All right, so next up are the ACS devices, and I personally own an ACS-10. I absolutely love it. It's sort of the sweet spot in the Orander line. It's the catch-all, the do-all, the kitchen sink. Tell us about what the ACSs do. Right, ACS stands for Arender Content Server. These are your content creators. You pop a CD in and these drives, maybe you come home from a show and you pick up a CD at the merch booth on the way out, and the system takes care of the rest. You do not have to be an IT computer wizard, you don't need to call your millennial neighbor to help rip your CDs, that's what the ACS is for. Um, so the software that's built into this does a really good job, first of all, of creating CD rips that just sound fantastic. Uh, they have very advanced error detection and correction, so anytime there's any kind of error detected in, in any frame, it will re-rip that sector of the CD up to 50 times before it moves on to the next one, and it just results in really great sounding rips. The differences between these two models, they both have the same overall feature when it comes to the CD ripping and library creation. Um, not to mention the ACS Manager app, which is a companion app that you use to kind of go under the hood and configure your ripping settings. If you want to rename any metadata or pull down alternate cover art, you can do that with the ACS Manager app. But the ACS 100 has all of that functionality and it's really designed as maybe an add-on. So say you've got an A20 in your main hi-fi rig and you want to add this CD ripping capability. You pop one of these 
in an office or in your main hi-fi rack, or it can be the source to a second system. It's got a USB port, it can connect to a DAC, and it sounds great that way. But moving up to the ACS-10, we have a bona fide audiophile level digital output in addition to all the CD ripping functionality. So we've got these beautiful linear power supplies in here. We've got the same filtered and isolated USB audio output that you have across the whole rest of the a render line. So mm -hmm. this is, as you said, yep. the kind of all-in-one CD ripper, content creator, digital source component. So one other feature that I really love about the ACS products is, you know, the ACS can be a hub for all of your music. So all of your other Oranders, you know, you might have a less expensive N150 in your bedroom or something. Instead of loading it up with an entire storage section of music all over again, it'll essentially talk to the ACS and pull the music over the network to the N150. And you can do this with any of the Orander devices that have an ACS in the in the loop if you will that's exactly how this product is designed to be used as the musical mothership where your whole collection lives and then you've got maybe satellite players throughout the house all right so next up are the all digital products the the servers that don't have any dax built into them and the first one we're going to start with like i mentioned before in the bedroom system is the n150 tell us about these products Ari. Sure, so these digital output transports that are designed to be interfaced with a separate standalone DAC, this is the bread and butter of a render. This is where the company got started and it remains kind of the heart and soul of the brand. Starting with the N150, we have an ultimately dead quiet, pristine USB audio output that you can interface with any DAC and really elevate the performance of that DAC to darn near its, its ultimate level. Of course it gets better as you move up the line here, but starting with the M150, we get this filtered, isolated USB audio output and the whole render experience that makes this a fun way to listen to music. You get that starting here with the M150. When you move up to the N200, you do get a better power supply, you do get a sexy color screen, and you get a coax output, which many DACs seem to sound better on coax than USB. USB kind of became the de facto standard for digital audio because computers have USB ports. They yep. don't have fancy coax ports like these. So it, it does get better when you, when you switch to that coax in many cases. And tell us about the digital caching that these have. That's, I find that That's very huge. important. Yeah. yeah, thanks for asking about yeah. that. That's a huge part of the whole Arender ethos. And it's one of many things that all Arender models have in common with each other. They really have more in common than they do apart. But the caching playback engine is huge. Every render has a solid state memory on board that can actually download a minimum of, I think 180 gigs is the smallest cache that's available. That's enough for uh, many hours worth of music. So when you tap on a song or an album or a playlist to play it, the system actually downloads a version of that file to the solid state cache, whether it's from the local hard drive here or from the title streaming server in Norway or wherever it may be. <laughs> so what you're listening to is the file that is downloaded and cached locally. Your iPhone, your any digital music player needs to do some form of buffering. You've heard of this term buffering, but that's usually more of a first in first out type of thing where the system downloads a few seconds worth of music content, plays it back, purges it, downloads the next few seconds and around and around we go kind of spinning our tails. This caching mechanism is fundamentally different where it downloads the whole version of the mm -hmm. file and it's not doing any of this wheel spinning. The advantage to that is once that caching process is complete, the rest of the system can really pretty much go to sleep. Yeah, yeah. It's like a hot rod approach. Yep. All it has to worry about is playing music and the less CPU activity that we trigger, the less current we're drawing from the power supplies and the less noise that we're generating yeah. in the process. And one of the great things that I know that you've added in the, in the last couple of years to the Orner products is this big capacitor bank for dealing yes. with, yeah. uh, you know, in case your power goes out, right? Mm -hmm. These are obviously computers. Computers don't like, you know, abrupt power outages and just, you know, instantly shut down. So what do these capacitors do? They protect you in the event of an abrupt loss of power. Right. So they hold enough juice to let the system shut itself down gently, yep. spin down the drives, close all the apps, what have you. So it's, it's, you know, as you said, no computer likes it when you just pull the plug. And in this case, you're protected from any kind of damage from a sudden loss yep. of power. And that's true for every render that you see here. Yeah, and I don't know that any other servers that we sell or have seen that do that sort of thing. And that's really important. Um, 
Uh, we have a lot of uh, power outages in North Carolina with yeah. all of the uh, thunderstorms and yeah. whatnot, so uh, I love that feature. Yeah. So now we get up to some of the big boys here. Tell us yeah. about these. The N20, this is just an amazing piece of gear. This, this is where a render really separates itself from other brands that do this form of digital source component mm -hmm. streaming. Um, and the real sweetheart thing about this product is this OCXO clock that you see here. That's one of the most precise clocks that's available in the audio field. So outside of like military applications, mm -hmm. this OCXO clock is almost as good as it gets. And that's governing the digital output board here. Mm -hmm. So because of this clock, we achieve this perfect balance of low noise and low jitter. Jitter is a form of noise, of course, but this is really where the render magic really starts to happen. I'd say the performance delta between the N200 and the N20 is the largest jump. When you're moving up the line, the, the, the N20 is the largest kind of aha moment when you right. plug that thing in. Yeah. It's not a subtle difference there. And we've got this actually married with a uh, Bartok uh, uh, DCS, the new Apex edition. And I'm loving that it's got an AES output. Yes. That's really the sweet spot on yeah. this device that I think the AES sounds really good. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to uh, use the clock connection here to slave it with the bar talk and an external yes. clock. So, you know, yeah, this is really, this is where things get really yeah. good, really yeah. good. Starting with the N20 and the N30, we get a clock input, as mm -hmm. you mentioned. So that's, if you've got really climbing to the top of that digital mountaintop, you've got a separate master clock that is syncing up all the devices in the signal path. And that's, you know, you, you notice the sound stage just snap into focus. Piano music yep. comes from a piano shaped Better object decays. between yep. your speakers instead mm -hmm. of these like disparate notes coming yep. from different speaker drivers. That's the type of magic that a clock can do. Um, moving up to the top of the line N30SA here, essentially, it's an N20, but they busted it out into two separate chassis. So the screen, the power supply, the LAN port, the CPU board, all these nasty noise generating parts of the computer are in this one box down here. And then the audio outputs are completely electrically and mechanically isolated from all of that. There are these two kind of umbilical cables that are used to connect the two boxes. One transmits the power, the other transmits the data, and it, it it's you end up with um, a digital presentation that is just saturated, colorful, full of blood and punch, and it just it pops wow factor. in a way that yeah. is rare to find. Yep. Yeah. And this also has a clocking connection, and so last on the line, we've got uh, um, a master clock here, and then we're going to talk about a new clock that's coming. Yeah. Um, tell us about these pieces. So this MC20 here was released last year. This is kind of your cost no object. I want the best clock that I can get in my system. Uh, it has a rubidium module which generates a 10 megahertz reference clock signal. So when you hear about an atomic clock, that's a, this rubidium module is that. It's, I think, the best measurements that I've ever seen on any clock on the market. And that's just the rubidium module. Yeah. It also has a dual OCXO module like you have on the N20. So this can interface with a wide variety of DACs that have clock inputs that may accept either a word clock signal or just a straight master clock signal. This, so this really mm -hmm. needs a whole separate video of all, explaining what all that tech jargon means. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot, lot to be said in there. And so now we've got a new piece, and this is called the MC10, which is a scaled down version. Uh, tell us a little bit about this. Exactly, this is the first look. I saw this for the first time when we unpacked it for the show here. That's what's so fun about coming to these audio trade shows mm -hmm. is you get scoops on, on new products like this. The MC10 has the rubidium module that we're so excited about on the MC20. It omits the dual OCXO modules because the fact is there's really only a small handful of DACs that you can even interface that with. So we cut the price in half. We delivered 100% of the performance that's important about the rubidium module on this piece. And this can kind of serve as a reference signal for your render. If your DAC has a master clock input, this is all you need. Right, love it. All right, so we're gonna take a little break and we're gonna move over to another room in this, uh, um, in, in our suite here where they've got a brand new product we're gonna talk about, totally different. Um, very excited about this. Stay tuned, we'll be back in a second. 
So last up is something very special. I don't know of anybody else that has something like this. This is, I said kitchen sink over there. I think this might be the new kitchen sink standard. So tell us about this new piece. This is the AP20. I'm personally giddy to have this. It was down to the last minute, whether we were gonna be able to show it uh, here at Expona. And I'm so happy that, we've, that we were able to eke it out here. This is, you know, we've, we've got a render models with digital outputs. We've got a renders with analog outputs. Now we have an render with speaker outputs as well. So this thing delivers the full render experience. It's an render at its heart and core, but it also has a 200 watt per channel uh, amplifier built into it. it. Goes to 350 watts into four ohms. It has an analog preamp section. Now this is huge, especially with a class D amp and all this digital stuff going on. It's really common to use a, either a DSP, digital signal processing, or a DAC level volume control at best. This has an analog R to R step attenuator style nice. volume control built into it. So it's really, when you invest in that high end preamp, mm -hmm. a large part of what you're paying for is the volume control circuitry. And a render went to great lengths to install a volume control mechanism in here that is lossless and just delivers a great presentation. And we've been getting really nice feedback on the system that we have here and we haven't, we haven't even seen anything yet from, yeah, yeah. from what this thing is going to do. But it not has, only that, it has analog inputs, right? It so has you analog can inputs that connect a turntable or something through. or a phono pre. Exactly. And there's not going to be any A to D that happens there. It's a, it's a pass through into that analog preamp. So it's really the type of thing where you can have this and a pair of speakers, power cable and speaker wire, and you're done. Yeah. It's a unique product for a render, and I think it's a unique product in the marketplace. There are other integrated amps that have streaming functionality, right. but that streaming is always either um, managed by a third-party app or uh, it's an, an afterthought in some way. With mm -hmm. a render, the streaming portion of it is anything but an afterthought. That's where we started. And then mm -hmm. it turns out a render's engineers can also design a really kick-ass amplifier along with it. And not only that, I see some headphone jacks. Yeah, killer headphone section. It's, I believe it's got its own transformer powering that as mm -hmm. well. Um, analog inputs, analog outputs, uh, digital inputs. If you've got a TV or a CD transport that you want to plug into this, you can do that too. So it's really, uh, you know, picture this in your living room and get rid of all the boxes and cables and spaghetti. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think we're in a good place with this guy. Yeah. Do we have a price yet? Twenty-two thousand U.S. I think you know, based on how many pieces of equipment you've have to gather together, mm -hmm. um, I, I, it's a bargain. Honestly, I mean, you're going to have to get a lot of stuff to even come close to the quality of the sound of this. I listened to it earlier; it's absolutely delicious. I can't wait to get one. Um, thank you so much, Ari. This thank has you, been Drew. a blast. Yeah. Um, do we have anything in the future that you can talk about? Is there anything else new or is this is it, right? You need more yeah, yeah. than this? this I don't is... know. You never know. I mean, you guys always have something in your back pocket. Oh, so. there's always something. Yeah, there's yeah. major software updates coming down the pipeline for you existing or render owners out there. You can yeah. look forward to that. They, they're always cooking up something new. And this AP20 is one that, uh, as I said, I've been personally looking forward to for a long time. Uh, I think this is going to be a really fun so one. So maybe one thing I did sort of forget that we talk about is the conductor app itself. I mean, are there, you know, what sort of things in the future are coming? Are there going to be more services from other streaming services yeah. that'll be added? Um, what's look, going on with that? Yeah, look for that type of thing coming up. Uh, we've got some big announcements coming up in the next few months that uh, we aren't quite ready to put into the YouTube universe with your 50,000 viewers or however many you have. A um, million. <laughs> <laughs> but that's coming. And uh, st stay tuned for that. We'll do another video when that comes Sounds up. good. Can't yeah. wait. All right. Yeah. Thank you. And if you like, subscribe. Leave some comments below. Um, we're going to put all kinds of information on, on these new products on the website real soon. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.